So, Fast Food on the Amstrad, um, written by us, the Oliver Twins. Nice fancy music to um, introduce and introducing all the characters. We've got a nice picture of uh, Dizzy being chased by monsters down the left hand side, which kind of sets the scene really well. And um, on the right hand side, we're going to have the score on the levels. So let's play the game. Oh, and of course, uh, it helps the, the aspect ratio of the maze, um, having those two borders. Now off you go, Dizzy, he's got a chicken. Okay, now the interesting thing that people will notice about this game is it is a little bit similar to Pac-Man, it has to be said, but there's no enemies. And one thing that we found is that most games are really, really hard uh, back in the day um, and we could see little kids wanting to get into games and just finding that they're killed by everything and so we thought while you're just trying to work out what the key controls are and get your head around it don't put enemies and we've had a lot of people saying that the first game they ever played was Fast Food Dizzy and it's because they were playing it when they were like four or five years old which I think is quite funny absolutely and there's a little speed up and we can go up and get that last one which is the pizza yeah. And that's the first level complete, nice and easy. Right, so we've got into it. Different graphics, different mazes. I have to say that uh, we did have a habit of putting backgrounds where they were kind of a little bit unwarranted and made it look a little bit busy. Uh, the problem is though, that the colours were all so strong in those days. Uh, you'd have, I think, 16 colours and they were all extremely over contrasted. And on the Amstrad, they were very, very wide pixels too. Oh, and here's one of those lovely little cartoons. And you're awarded an extra life. Okay, so uh, we've got an enemy on the screen now. Um, each of the different enemies had different personalities. When I say personalities, it was just to do with the logic that they use for tracking you. Um, so there's different um, decision-making paths that you can have for these creatures. So should they head towards um, the general direction you're going, or should they try to head you off by heading to the next junction or if you're traveling down should they travel down even if uh, they're above you and there's various choices you can make on different ways that they could catch you um, and therefore you get them behaving differently the game started one Friday afternoon in December 1988 and we asked ourselves a question could we write a maze game before Monday morning spend all weekend no sleep a uh, sort of game jam I guess before game jams exist existed so Monday morning came and we had indeed created a great maze game with 30 levels um, but we felt that it needed um, much better graphics so we asked Neil Adamson a friend of ours to do the, the graphics um, and put music to it and thought actually you know th this could be a proper published game so we're on level five now. Um, we've got a couple of monsters. Um, we've got some chickens. There's a stationary milkshake. I wonder why that's not moving around. Um, yeah, we called it fast food because our idea was um, that in Pac-Man you had the very predictable fruit turn up in one place and not actually create kind of any interest. So we we decided that rather than fruit, we'd uh, make it more popular um, currency of food, which. Uh, is your burgers and milkshakes and things like that and um, I much prefer burgers to fruit <laughs> and then we thought it would be much more interesting if in fact they ran around which instantly gave us the name fast food although at this point in time I would say the food is relatively slow there's a lot of levels it gets a lot faster Oh, I died! No, nice fracturing of the sprite there, they. Eh? Um, part of the reason for it being slow was to kind of give you the thinking time. So obviously you've got to uh, work out where they're all heading and, and what's the best strategy for heading them off. That was very interesting. Did you see? I died in exactly the same way. Just like Pac-Man, if you do the same thing, they will do the same thing. So therefore you can learn patterns. Unfortunately, it also showed that I didn't learn very quickly because I did the same flipping mistake. But it's great that you can have these predictable patterns because it does mean that um, you actually learn, learn methods to get through the more difficult uh, levels. 
there's an interesting thing as well with the food being um, items that collide with the enemies in the fact that oh. at the beginning the food is actually able to be used tactically to protect you um, but then as you kind of go to finish the level there's less food and therefore less to protect you so interestingly enough, whilst researching this game to sort of put this video together, we uh, checked up on uh, Wikipedia to just check a couple of facts and we discovered this story about us creating it for Happy Eater restaurants. And oh, and you've died again! Well, <sighs> we, we kind of couldn't understand that. Um, that. That seemed completely wrong. So I went into my loft, um, got down the original um, source code, discs, notes, design, patterns and everything. He keeps at everything. Um, and lo and behold, I actually found a couple of letters um, to the artist and to uh, Codemasters, to and fro. And it does turn out that in fact, um, we must have contacted Codemasters after that weekend on the Monday or Tuesday and actually proposed the idea of a maze game. And somebody, probably Bruce Everest, um, contacted Happy to the restaurant to see if some deal could be done. And as a result, we've got a few letters backwards and forwards about changing the graphics into to Happy Eater icon. Unfortunately that clearly fell through in about January and in fact we then decided to put Dizzy into the game. We still loved the, the name Fast Food which was the original name we actually had and we thought we'd call it Fast Food Starring Dizzy. Unfortunately when the artwork was done they did remove the words Starring Dizzy because they said well there's a big picture of Dizzy on the, on the illustration which was true. So here we're looking at one of the much harder levels. Um, as we said, we allowed uh, people, novices, to, to play the game quite easily without having the monsters. Back in those days, we've got to remember that uh, people didn't have uh, game saves. So whilst there may have been some passwords in some games, we thought let them choose any level they like. Therefore, they could set it on harder levels if they felt capable of doing so. And we figured that people would work through the levels, remember say that they got to level 8 and then next time they came back to it, once they'd beaten level 8, they'd be able to choose level 9 and almost have a save game and go all the way through. Admittedly there was no real challenge to sort of like, have you beaten level 30, could you could just go literally straight to level 30 and beat it and therefore see the congratulations screens. Um, but we think that it was an interesting experiment and I think that people actually appreciated that uh, they could play it at whichever level they chose. As with all games, you need a photo and a story, so we decided it would be funny to show us uh, doing our research. Obviously, when making fast food, we knew that a large part of our audience were Spectrum owners, and so we designed the game knowing that we'd have to uh, deal with things like attribute clash, so we went and made sure that we didn't have uh, backgrounds on the mazes and that they'd all be nicely spaced and we actually up the graphics because uh, the pixels are higher resolution on the spectrum to the mode that we'd used on the Amstrad. It's interesting to note now whilst we look at this that things like the Codemasters logo uh, when you viewed them on the, the TVs through the fuzzy RF leads you couldn't quite see the colours the same and um, for that Codemasters logo the way the blue has black holes in it was barely visible on the original when we were working on TVs. We knew it was there because when we were drawing it we had to work with it with the uh, attribute clash problem uh, but it certainly wasn't as obvious as when we look at it now on nice high-res uh, monitors. The game had lots of levels, 30 in all, here they all are. I remember trying to uh, pick rough themes for each of them and yes you can see that we put our initials into one but I think a lot of people used to do that kind of thing back then. As with many of our games they were very successful and converted to other platforms. We introduced the idea of easy, medium and hard straight from the title screen to deal with different players abilities. The mazes were redrawn with much higher resolution and more colourful graphics and therefore the mazes were also reconstructed to suit the graphics. The other interesting thing was um, actually sorting the levels into sort of the, the correct order so that you actually had the right difficulty curve. We actually did this by um, setting up all the different mazes, laying them all out, putting all the monsters in. Um, 
And then we both took turns in playing every one of the levels three or four times each and then rating each level out of ten for their difficulty. And then we simply put them in that order. Inspired by the original cartoons on Pac-Man, we thought it'd be nice to have these and award you an extra life so that you'd always be wondering what the next cartoon was. These are from the ST and Amiga. As with all our games, when we finished them, we'd bundle up all the notes and the discs and everything, put them all in a folder and store them away. And they've been in my loft ever since. Going through this uh, file box, we've got the layout of the screen as we planned it out. We've got the characteristics of the power-ups um, and how the um, various monsters chase you and their logic. Um, we've got a sprite list. Everything had to be fitted into a very small amount of memory, 32K. So it lays out all the sprite numbers and a memory, basic memory map at the bottom as well, I can see. And then, of course, we've got planning of the cartoons. So we were massive fans of Pac-Man and other maze games. In fact, it was Pac-Man in the arcade that sort of got us into games. And then we got addicted to a friend's Apple II E version of The Taxman, which was a green screen version of uh, Pac-Man. And then, of course, there was the classic snapper on the BBC from Acorn Soft. That was really good. And lots of other maze games, um, particularly on the BBC Micro. Pac-Man is a very interesting game actually because it's quite simple, um, it has some nice enemies and some simple maids. It's actually a really good game to learn on. In fact, uh, my son was at junior school. Well, can I just say, it's also really, really good fun. Absolutely, and you can um, work out your sort of basic coding with a few sprites moving around on low-powered computers. But yeah, my son was uh, at school and he came home one day saying that uh, they were learning to program, which I was quite impressed at, obviously, on a program called Scratch, which I hadn't heard of. Um, um, but we were looking at it together, and he was saying that, like, looking at all the demos on there, it must be very simple and very basic. But I looked at the kind of language... And, and therefore you couldn't actually do much with it. Yeah, he it was saying... It was going to be boring. Yeah, he said you couldn't actually write a game. But I thought... Go on, tell him what you did. So I didn't get any sleep that night, actually, because after we went to bed, um, I thought, actually... I think I probably could write this, and it's been years since I've written anything, so I decided to uh, spend the night, it, well, I was hoping to only spend a few hours, but you know the way it goes, it just goes right the way through, and yeah, by breakfast I'd written uh, Pac-Man for Scratch. Um, the last came to, I think it had about uh, 70,000 downloads. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really good with Scratch, because you can actually see how you wrote it. And I would definitely recommend anyone who is um, interested at all in how games work to take a look at Scratch, because it is really good, and I would say I think any 8-bit game could be written in Scratch. Did Obviously say having cake? a career in uh, video games that mm. was initially Hi, inspired by Pac-Man. It was an absolute honour many years later to down. work on Pac-Man World 3 for Namco for the 25th anniversary. We even had Awatani-san, uh, the original creator of Pac-Man, uh, due to visit us in, I think it was about the September or October um, in 2005. Unfortunately, he cancelled coming due to um, terrorist threats and plane flights. I think it was the shoe bomber or something. So that's Fast Food, starring Dizzy. We hope you enjoyed the game and this video. Thank you. And goodbye.